Um, I want to invite uh, Dr. D. Stokes. She is an entrepreneurial minister, an educator, a consultant um, who is known as a program builder. She utilizes her apostolic gift to repurpose organizations and build influential people who change the world and live out the gospel practically. Dr. Stokes accomplishes this through seminars, webinars, workshops, preaching, teaching, consulting, etc. She serves on the teaching and preaching team at Christ Wesleyan Church in Greensboro, North Carolina, and is the director of the of the multiplication, um, sorry, the multicultural ministry for the North Carolina East District of the Wesleyan Church. She's a president and CEO of an apostolic cross-cultural nonprofit ministry, D. Stokes Ministries. She owns a consulting firm and does leadership development in the areas of cultural intelligence, emotional intelligence, unconscious bias, transformational leadership, and burnout. She's the director of the Seeds Project for the Luther Seminary's uh, Faith and Lead Innovation Team. And uh, she lives in the Triad area of North Carolina is, and is heavily involved in the Triad, serving on several boards. She's also a board member with Reliant Mission and member of the UNC Charlotte Alumni uh, Board of Directors. She is a dedicated and devoted follower of Jesus and wishes everyone to experience intimacy with the Lord and live out the gospel practically. So I give you Dr. D. Stokes. Thank you, Lori. Good to see everybody today. Uh, I just love Black people. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout. It's my job to get us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's our job, my job to get us excited today. So I want to do that and take a few minutes, okay? And get us ready to prepare our hearts for what is going to happen today. Now, listen, I'm going to speak prophetically over this thing this morning because God is doing a new thing and we should be excited about what God is doing. So we are excited to see you. Let me start with this. This We are rethinking the nature of mission and movement today, right? So let me start with a good theology of mission should have these four elements. Come on, take notes. If you're not taking notes, take notes, right? Um, the first element of a good theology of mission is that we are a sent people. Mission is being sent out. Jesus sent out, right? The 70, the 12. Jesus sent them out. We are a sent people. We are not called to build our own kingdoms. Somebody say amen. We are called to equip people and send them out. So sending is part of a good theology of mission. The second thing is, is that mission is to make disciples of all nations, right? Make disciples. Now, many times when, when we talk about mission, we talk about salvation, but it's not just salvation only, it's also discipleship. It's both and. Indeed, it is both and. It's got to be discipleship to all nations. Mission number three is deliverance and emancipatory action, liberation, proclamation of the gospel to address the poor and the disenfranchised and the oppressed. The gospel is emancipatory. Mission is emancipatory. And number four, mission is witness. Our witness is not just what we say, but how we live, our presence, our a way of life. And this leads us to a missional way of living. There's a difference between the two. We're going to talk about that today. So four things that a good theology of mission should include, being sent out, making disciples of all the nations, deliverance and emancipatory action, and witness. And so living missionally, is a lifestyle, right? When we step outside our door, we are on mission. We are living missionally, right? Some people move into the neighborhood and become incarnational. It's not just a one-time occurrence, but a lifetime commitment. Intentionally, incarnationally, missional. Somebody ought to tweet that. Intentionally, incarnationally, missional, joining God's mission of redemption and restoration. God is the God of restoration. So this conversation today 
will spark a movement. Come on, somebody. <laughs> this conversation today, I prophesy, will spark a movement. We have to answer some questions, though, after today. Where will we go from here? How should we strategize? How can we help one another? We got to stop doing it alone, right? We were never meant to be alone or to do things alone. What resources do we need? People, money, strategies, books, papers, suggestions, insight, prophetic words. Where can we compile these things and store them? How can we leave a legacy? Now, let me give you a word for this season. My, my theme for my ministry this season is be restored. Be restored. It's based on two different verses of scripture. The first is Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. The phrase be still is actually the word Rapha. We know God as Jehovah Rapha, right? Our healer. In this uh, text, it means to let go of, to release, to be weak, be still. The second uh, text or verse that I want to call your attention to in, in this theme is Joel 2, 25a, I will restore. God said, I will restore. If you remember in Joel, he sent those nasty locusts, those swarming and stinging and gnawing and nasty locusts. And then God said, I will restore. So my prayer for us is that we would be so that God can restore. That's our my prayer for 2023. And so I want you to worship with me for a moment, if you will, as we open this convening uh, and lift up the name of Jesus. So worship with me. If you know this song, sing it. Uh, don't unmute yourself, but sing it. <laughs> and then I'm gonna pray over us. You are holy. Oh, so holy, you are holy, oh, so holy, what a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne, to be called into your presence as your own. You are worthy, oh, so worthy. You are worthy, oh, so worthy. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne, to be called into your presence as your own, your own, your own, your own. I can search the heavens high. I can search the earth below, but there's no one. Come on, sing. There is no one, no one. I can search the heavens high. I can search the earth below, but there's no one. There is no one, no one, no one so holy, no one so worthy, no one so faithful. There is no one, no one, no one so holy. No one so worthy. No one so faithful. There is no one. 
No one, no one so holy. No one so worthy. No one so faithful. There is no one, no one I can search the heavens high. I can search the earth below, but there's no one. There is no one. Father, in Jesus' name, there's no one like you. We can search the heavens high and the earth below, but we still can't find anybody like you, God. So, Lord, we thank you for today. We present ourselves today, God. Speak to us, speak through us, and speak in spite of us. Help us to do your will, not our will, but your will be done today, God. Thank you for this convening. Thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice now and who might even listen to this or watch this later, God. Help us. Give us answers to the questions, God. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives and in our ministries. And God, we present all of these things to you. We present all of our ideas and all of our insights and all of our desires today to you, God, that you, Lord, uh, would anoint us, that you would help us, that you would give us strategies in Jesus' name. Let this be a movement. We proclaim it to be a movement, God, that this won't be a one-time conversation, but that the conversation would continue in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our churches, that we would gather again, that we would meet new friends and new uh, colleagues, that we would connect in the way that you would have us connect today, and that this will not be the only time we speak it in the name of Jesus, and we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.